Now that I have an Arduino Due, I wanted to try an easy project just to get started, so I went to the Arduino page, I'll put a link in the description, and I found this simple function generator that uses both of the DAC 0 and 1 outputs to generate sine, triangle, sawtooth, and square waves. And the frequency supposedly varies between 1 hertz up to about 170 hertz, although my results were a little different. But the circuit is very simple, so I thought this is a good place to get started. So because they're using DAC 0 and 1, which are located around here, they have a separate push button on a digital input. They use digital pin 2 and digital pin 3 to control the separate DACs. And they have basically a 10K pull down resistor and an active high push button. So you press it and it cycles between the four waveforms and then just loops back and starts over. So you can independently change the waveform on each DAC output. But the frequency of the output is going to be the same for both channels and it's controlled by a potentiometer on analog input zero. So this, as drawn here, connecting this potentiometer, normally you think about if you turn the potentiometer all the way down or counterclockwise, it's like zero, and then you turn it all the way clockwise and it's maximum. But the way they wire this, when you turn it all the way down, you're actually sending the middle wiper toward 3.3 volts or the high. And when you turn it all the way clockwise up, you're sending the middle wiper to ground. But in trying it out, going from low to high does change the frequency from minimum 1 hertz up to the maximum. So I was confused about this for a bit, but after studying the code, I figured out what they're doing, and I don't know for sure if I know why, but I have a theory. There's two files. The main one is functiongenerator.ino, and the other one is waveforms.h. So they have a link for get code at the bottom of each copy of the code on the page. So I just downloaded and saved from here and made sure I saved them with the proper file names. And I put them in the same folder within my usual Arduino projects area. Looking at the waveforms.h file, this is basically where the waveform data points are stored. So they say they have a maximum of four waveforms because they're cycling between sine, triangle, sawtooth, and square. And the maximum number of samples is 120. That's how many data points make up each wave. So this is the array, which is 4 by 120. So the first one out of four sets of 120 data points contain the sine wave data. And here's just all the hex values for a 12-bit number. The hex numbers are three characters long because that will make a 12-bit number. So FFF is 4095 decimal, or 12 ones in binary. And zero, which is the same as 000, is the minimum 12-bit number. So 7FF hex is 2047 decimal, which is half of the maximum 4095. So they're starting in the middle of the entire 12-bit range, call it the center line, and then they're increasing until they get up to FFF, the maximum. So they start in the middle of the waveform and ramp up in the shape of a sine wave. Then they start ramping back down and they get back to 7FF. So they go up and then down then they keep going lower until they get to zero. So the center line, they ramp up, down to zero, middle line, and then down to actual zero. And then they ramp back up to the last point, which is close to the middle line again, which the next point is going to be 7FF, right in the middle. So they've generated a sine wave, and you just keep looping and generating it similarly for the other waveforms. 
So a square wave is pretty obvious. They start with all high for half of the samples, and then they switch to all low for half of the samples. And then you just repeat that and you've got a square wave. And here's the main program. So they include the waveform file, and they define one hertz sample is one million divided by max sample number. We know max sample number is 120 from the waveform file, and what they're trying to say is it's one million microseconds in a one hertz waveform. Because if this is one million microseconds, converting it to seconds, you move the decimal to the left six times, and that gives you 1.000000 seconds. So one second divided by 120 total samples in the waveform gives you how much time is in between equally spaced each sample of 120 total samples. In other words, this is used as a delay timer so that if you go and grab one of the 120 samples and then wait this long and then grab the next out of the 120 samples and wait this long, by the time you've done all 120 samples and you've gone through the generation of the waveform, it takes you one second overall to do that if you have a one hertz signal. So this really confused me at first, and it still kind of does, but it might make more sense later in the code. So one hertz sample means the amount of time you should delay between each of the 120 samples that take up the entire waveform. And the reason they are talking in terms of microseconds of time required between each sample being put to the DAC is because they're using a delay function that takes microseconds of input. So this number is going to be used in a microsecond delay function that's called to wait the appropriate time between each of the 120 samples in the waveform. So they are all sent out equally spaced and reconstruct the waveform as accurately as possible. Then in the main loop, over and over, they're reading in the analog input, which is the potentiometer, to set the frequency of the waveform, and they're using the variable sample that they defined up here. So they're reading in the analog level, and they're mapping it from the original analog input of 0 to 4095, over to a new range of 0 to that 1 hertz sample from above. So it just so happens that 1 million microseconds divided by 120 maximum samples equals 8333.3 repeating. So they are mapping a reading of 0 to 4095 over to 0 to 8333. T sample. Originally this would not compile and I didn't know what was going on because I just took the code blindly. I got an error about T sample not being defined or something like that. So I googled it and somebody said just make it sample. So it's all referring to this original variable and the readings all are talking about sample. So what are they doing? Reading in the analog frequency setting and remapping it to 8333 for the 1 hertz sample. That's where the whole thing comes in where you turn the pot down, but it's actually turning it toward VCC. They're doing whatever they need to do here. They're reading the analog pin to see if we want to change the frequency. Otherwise, they're just writing out to both DACs whatever waveform we've chosen for each DAC sine, triangle, sawtooth, or square, and they're sending out the exact specific sample out of the 120 that we are on, you delay the amount of time then that you need between each sample, which for 1 hertz would be 8333 microseconds. So if we read in a zero, which is the potentiometer fully turned up clockwise, you are actually generating your highest frequency because you're not delaying at all. 
well, as long as it takes to call the function and come back, because you've already delayed zero. So this just does this as fast as possible and generates the highest frequency. When you have your biggest delay, you're waiting and generating a slower waveform. So that's why they're doing it this way, so that the biggest number that they're delaying is actually their slowest frequency that they fixed at one hertz. So the potentiometer should never be able to allow a setting less than one hertz. But depending how long it takes to run all the instructions, or if you run the code on a different processor speed, your minimum delays are just going to run as fast as they can, so you might get a higher frequency than they're saying 170 hertz maximum. And I did see more than 170 hertz maximum. So where do they get the 170 hertz maximum based on the time for all these instructions? I didn't go through the math myself, but I'm assuming what they're trying to say is if you've got a zero delay, then the fastest you can run is however long it takes to do all this. And then you slow it down from there by adding an actual delay above zero. Here's the sketch loaded in after I downloaded each of the file names and saved them appropriately. And the name of the folder they are in is the same as the INO sketch file, which is Function Generator. So taking it as is, straight from the web, I tried to compile and it gave an error that T sample was not declared in the scope. So that's where I did the research and I found out just make it sample and it should work. And so it does. I'm only showing one waveform for simplicity and with 500 millivolts per division the waveform starts at about 500 millivolts up from the ground level on the scope and with a peak to peak of about 2.3 volts plus the 500 millivolt offset from ground. That brings the top of the waveform at about 2.8 volts. So if VCC is 3.3 volts, 3.3 minus 2.8 maximum waveform signal is another 500 millivolts offset from the VCC rail. So that's my first project attempt with the Arduino DUE. I just wanted to get it up and running, nothing too special, and I learned a few things already.